Liz Simmons, Participation Development Officer for Kent FA. Yeah, the Game Changer was brought in a couple of years ago as a new strategy for the FA. Um, it comes in five parts. Um, and the, to start with, there's the Elite Performance Unit. Um, that was all about the talent pathway and how we were going to actually get our players up to the top level. Um, we're managing to sort of sit around internationally level five or six in the world and we need to get higher. So the Elite Performance Unit has been put together and what they've done there is employed um, an Elite Performance Director with lots of regional staff underneath and that's to help the coaches to reach the right level and also the players to reach the right level. Restructured everything underneath for the talent pathway um, which meant that there's 31 centres of excellence so for girls up to the age of 18 from the age of 9 can go to a centre of excellence and they're monitored and coached by high level coaches and then underneath that there are what are called player development centres in which there are 29 of them in the country. Um, we in Kent have got one player development centre and one centre of excellence so our girls have a pathway. Um, for the elite performance unit it's based at St George's Park so again that's the new home for the FA and everything goes on there. Um, another strand for, for the game changer was the commercial strategy. Um, they're starting to say that you know we're getting better players, let's advertise, let's get out there. The back of the Olympic Games for Great Britain was huge to have 90 odd thousand people there to watch the final but to have 80,000 watching GB play Brazil so it was then felt we need to capture this and so a commercial strategy was put together. Um, so what they want to do is sell England women as their own brand so not mixed in with the men so the FA Cup, the England Games were all actually marketed and branded and sold in their own right. So BT Sport will have the game. Yesterday's game was BBC Two, which was fantastic. And WSL games were all played at, at BT Sport. So that, that's the um, commercial side and a strategy will come out for that. Uh, Women's Super League, uh, which is fantastic and professional game. Girls can get paid to play football. Initially only the eight teams, but now we have two divisions, Summer League, absolutely brilliant so there can be a separate fan base the girls that play in winter can now support in the summer so it's a great way forward I say two divisions now so promotion and relegation so again girls are seeing that there's somewhere to go and play to a higher level and get paid to do so opportunities um, growing participation uh, obviously that's where my role comes into its own really um, my role is to actually get as many girls playing football as we can uh, for um, Game Changer, they want it, uh, girls football to remain the number one participation sport. Um, quite hard because netball and do push us very hard, but we're doing a lot of programmes to make sure that we can get out there. Um, they work, the FA work with all the counties and we have a county plan that we have to deliver to and that county plan has to cover all things women and girls. So that's where that would link into to Game Changer. Uh, the fan base um, is another st strand. How can we grow that? Well, we grow that by getting more people at games, um, networks, you know, social media, all of those things, Twitter, Facebook, lots of festivals we put on. They're all branded with the England brands. Okay. <laughs> um, and then following on from there, um, with the Game Changer, it's written number one to five in that order that we've just talked about. Um, but it's a little bit chicken and egg because where I work, the most important thing to me is the participation, get the girls playing, and then you'll have more girls to choose from to play at the elite level. Obviously, from an FA perspective, it's very important that the girls out there internationally are doing us proud and the commercial side of it is right. So it's really finding that balance. So in the county, We'll be doing the participation, and the FA will be doing the elite. Whereas, yeah. and then they link with the player development centre and centre of excellence. Um, right. Well, Game Changer, as I say, is the is the FA overseeing document. We in the county have what we call a county plan, and every county, all fifty in the country, have county plans that we have to deliver to. 
sent by the FA, but we set our own agendas and how we want to deliver. Um, so within Kent, uh, for me, it's getting as many girls playing football. Uh, we see a little bit of a dropout at the teenager group, so we're doing some work around that. But at the moment we have something for the younger girls, which is called Goals for Girls, and it's aimed at girls 5, 6, 7 and 8. They train with clubs, and then once every six weeks they come together and they can play a little festival and do some skills. And in that way, it's just getting them to understand that there are games and you do go to other grounds and play because we play at different venues. And it's also to get the parents on side, to get them to understand that actually if you're going to play girls football, there is a bit of a commitment as well for travel um, and stuff like that. Um, last year, this was so successful, we did double our numbers. Um, and so we've now got 32 teams in what we call mini soccer, which is from under 11 down. Um, so for us, that's absolutely fantastic. We have a great league called Kent Girls and Ladies League. They have about 120 odd teams that play in their league from under nines through to under 18s. And the best thing about that league, it's very flexible. And we actually play now under 12 to under 16, 9v9. We don't play 11v11 because we didn't have the numbers. So rather than saying you don't play, we've actually changed the structure and we play 9v9. Um, as I mentioned a bit earlier, we have the PDC here, Kent PDC. Um, that's got 53 girls playing at it. You train once a week, but they still play for their clubs. But it's a stepping stone to greater things. The Centre of Excellence, we've got 60 girls at Gillingham. Um, when they're there, they can't play for their club. So they're, they're there, they're almost, it's like signing a contract, but they train to high level, and that's where England will scout them. They won't scout them anywhere else. You have to be at, at a Centre of Excellence. Um, for the under 14s and under 16 sort of age groups from there, that's where the dropout is. So the FA are working with the Football League Trust and the Premier Leagues. And for us, because we only have Gillingham and Charlton here, so they're football league teams. So we work on a project called FLT, Football League Trust. And that's sending the club into the community to work with girls 14 plus. Um, both football clubs have to go and work in eight different schools each term. So we're looking to get maybe three to 600 girls through that programme each year. And hopefully some of those girls will go and play in a team. If not, we've actually got them doing some activity, which for us is, is equally as important. Um, we also have something called Mashup, um, which again is an FA project, uh, project, which again is aimed at the 14 plus girls that aren't playing and just trying to get them into informal football first. Hopefully they like it and move on. And both FLT and mashup can be whatever you want it to be. It can be five aside, 11 aside. We also have something called soccer size, so it's keep fit to music with a football. So, you know, the girls love that sort of thing, so they don't actually think they're playing football. And then at the end, you just do a little game with them. Um, we also have something called Just Play, which is for 16 plus. Exactly as it says, turn up and play. So if you haven't got any friends to come with you, you can still go along and a session will be put on. It'll be, again, it can be football, it can be futsal, it can be whatever you want it to be. Um, all our teams in Kent, girls' teams, uh, under 18, downwards to under 9, play in what's called a charter standard club. There's only one exception, one team that's working towards it, and that's our kite mark. So all our girls play in a safe club and they then play within a Charter Standard League. So again, all our girls are protected from, from everything playing high quality, so they get high quality coaching in their clubs by people who are trained. Um, so yeah, so that's how we're dealing with football. In, in a smaller area, if, if we're talking within Kent, um, for argument say, uh, let's think of goals for girls that we've done Oh, no, actually we did a Women's International Week. Um, so what we did was we brought together 75 girls teams across the age groups, so from under 9 up to under 18, and played a 4v4 tournament here. So 300 girls played here. We had young referees um, doing the refereeing. We had newly qualified coaches running the teams and young leaders, because we have a big volunteering uh, section here, so the young volunteers. Um, we had Sky Sports down to record it because it was just a huge, so many people playing. And then these girls then went to watch an international 
the first under 15 school girl international at Maidstone. So again, we're just giving the girls the opportunity mm. to try lots of different things. So if they're not going to play, they can referee. If they're not going to referee, they can coach. If they're not going to coach, volunteer, do journalism. I think Game Changer is, is right for now. I think we've been working over, I've been in the job for 14 years. We've been building up, getting the right people in place, the right structures and everything in place to move forward. We also have the right funding now, the right sponsors. So it means that now all the right people are in place to be able to carry that forward. So it's not tokenistic, it's not anything, we've got the right people, we've got the money, let's move on and make it as, as good as we can. I think had we done it a few years ago in this, we might not have been able to carry it forward the way that we wanted to, whereas now it's a, a robust document, the funding's all there, the sponsors are there, the staff are there, um, and we can really deliver it. The Olympics for us um, was absolutely fantastic to have 80 odd thousand people to watch GB women play Brazil was just unbelievable and they go away with a positive feeling you know especially as we won so. Absol oh, absolutely absolutely um, 100% um, behind everything that women are doing for football and say whether you're a player a coach a referee Everything that's out there encompasses its men and women. It's, it's not, you know, oh, they're the men and women there. It's all together. I would say in Kent we're very lucky in the fact that we've got the senior league is very well run, the youth league is very well run. So we've got a hundred and I think it's probably of 160 teams playing across all age groups. So we're in quite a good position. I think if we had to be honest, we would like more referees, um, male or female, to come and referee the girls' game. Um, we would like possibly slightly better facilities because we still play on a Sunday afternoon, so that's after everybody else has played and the weekend we've just had. The pitches are very wet. Um, but they're, they're not really, they're not stopping us playing because we can play different, you know, we can go to a 3G pitch, we can play futsal, we can go indoors, so there are other opportunities out there. But uh, I, think, I think if I had a wish list it would be to see some female referees coming through, or more coming through, and perhaps some more men referees wanting to referee the girls game. Yeah. Because it should be exclusive, because we've got girls out there now um, running the line on championship games for men, so why don't the men come and, and do our games? So. I think within the FA, to be very fair to the FA, they're doing a lot of work on, on the sexism angle. Um, Within our county, we have well every county we have an inclusion officer now, so it's out there to sort of actually sort of celebrate the good work that we're doing and eradicating sexism. Um, I think the FA have gone a long way to to actually stamping it out and are working very hard. If an issue comes up, they do stamp on it and deal with it straight away. Um, within Kent FA, we're extremely lucky. Our, our workforce is is cut across the middle. You know, there's as equally as many women as there are men working in football, um, which is absolutely fantastic for us. We just need to perhaps get a few more women um, onto our council, but again, we're working towards that and it's a work in progress. Um, I, to be fair, wondered this and did my referees course probably three years ago. Um, and hold my hand up to say that I still have yet to step over the line and actually referee a game. Um, I've run, I've been an assistant a couple of times. Um, I think it was very difficult because the girls, or not even just girls, young people, when you do your referees course, you then do six games and they're mentored. And it was very difficult to find mentors to mentor young people. But they tend to be older when they're mentors and they sometimes felt that the young people were doing the courses just to tick a box 
for university or college or whatever. Um, so they felt they actually didn't want to invest in the young people. We've done a lot of work the other way around to say no, you're telling, you know, explain to these guys, the young girls and young boys, actually you can earn a lot of money be a referee, you can earn £15 a game, you can do three or four games a weekend, be outside doing, doing what you love. <coughs> so I think we're actually making progress, um, but you have to be a little bit of a special character because whatever, you're going to get abuse. And it might not be bad abuse, but it will be criticism of every decision that you make. Was it offside? Was it not offside? Was it a foul? Was it not a foul? We all do it on a Saturday. I sit there and watch my beloved Brighton Hove Albion and I'll be the one, well, that wasn't offside. And I'm questioning. So, you know, I think it's just fine. You just need to be able to step up to the plate. And I think certainly with young referees, boys and girls, as long as we can support them, they'll, they'll come through. But they just need that little bit of help. And by having respect and having the Charter Standard Clubs, clubs are now stopping people. So if a parent says something, it's within everybody's right to say, that's not acceptable. It's a young person or an older person refereeing, that's not acceptable. And so that person's removed. So we are looking after people and they will come through. It's just taking a little bit longer.